talk about this one. So this is from Resident Advisor. This is regarding some guy um, called what's his name? Mind Against or something? What's his name? Mind of a Dragon has been accused of sexual assault, and of course, you know, <coughs> this got me thinking about in general um, what it must be like, what it must feel like to be a woman, you know, navigating nightlife. Um, and navigating maybe the electronic music scene, right? Um, I think for the most part, that scene, right, does attract degenerates like myself, right? People who are probably, you know, if not on the spectrum, <laughs> we probably float above it in some capacity, right? Um, the debauch activities, the late nights, the mindless conversations, the random Facebook ads, the Instagram follows, the comments, the sending of tunes uh, you know huddling in groups of five in one toilet cu cubicle right it's just a whole complete mess right it, it just it does attract some absolute freaks so there is part of me that thinks you know with that comes a responsibility to keep that place safe i think because if you're a freak in a club if you're a bit of a weirdo it's probably safe to say that you don't necessarily fit that well into with, you know regular society so your safe haven is the club your safe haven is that community that you've kind of fostered over years on the dance floor years in the toilet booth years at the bar years at the dj booth right that's where you've kind of fostered the relationships and they've allowed you to maybe get involved in the scene maybe it's allowed you to do other things to support that habit of going out regardless right it's a really cool community but i do feel sometimes a responsibility especially when i'm in spaces or i put on a, an event or i'm playing somewhere to be a good guest i guess that's probably something i've always been conscious of when i've gone out maybe it's because i've grown up in ends and there was always that kind of thing in the back of your head that you always got gonna get chucked out of a house party so you tried to especially the house party you wasn't invited to you tried your best to just be a good guest you didn't want to piss anybody off you didn't want to make a bad impression so it was all about making sure you weren't sloppy right and of course i've had my sloppy occasions we all have i think but you tried your best not to be sloppy to the point where you're making people feel uncomfortable especially girls especially that at that time especially when i was promoting nights right because part of the reason why i enjoyed promoting those nights that i put on was because you got to be surrounded with random girls right you had to be you had suddenly had a bit of value uh, exchange that you could kind of you know dance with right there was something cool that you could offer right uh, uh drinks tokens uh, guest list spots whatever right it kind of you know the ability to kind of get put something in a dj booth like a bag or a jacket you know those things kind of it's just nice so if with that you didn't want to ruin your relationship with these girls because part of the reason why you went to befriend them was you know they went to befriend you to get free entry you went to befriend them so they, they made the party a bit more palatable right for regular folk you don't want to be in a club surrounded with loads of dudes so it was a kind of win-win relationships but you just had to make sure that you never crossed that line of like you know being and what's that thing called um being inappropriate with people that you were kind of close to in that kind of club environment sometimes it did happen don't get me wrong but you made sure it was like a it was like a rule that you tried to abide by as part as best as you could and i think it's a real responsibility especially again i think in everyday life is a bit difficult right the lines get blurred but i think once you start entering into subcultures right like areas of interest that you're an area of interest that you've kind of formed the community and i really do think it's responsibility of you know the guy and the girl regardless of who's in this kind of you know dance of sexual attraction to really be um to really be um i don't know cool about how to interact with each other because if we can't look after ourselves there's no hope for the outside world there's literally no hope so this story is a bit disconcerting to read um but we'll read it anyway this is from ra said conductors key records cuts ties with mind of a dragon over sexual assault allegations it says conductors key records um has cut uh, the ties with uk artists mind of a dragon following allegations of sexual assault on june 23rd a twitter user called whatever the name is there detailed a description of an alleged sexual assault uh, by moad a by moad a real name of grant dragon in the back of a taxi in august 20 2019 now don't get me wrong i think and again this is what makes this whole lockdown situation so heartbreaking because for sure these stories are only coming about because some of these girls are just spending prolonged periods prolonged periods at home right driving themselves off the wall and i guess 
when you're living that fast paced life of always being outside, you probably don't, you probably try and put these kind of dark um, experiences to the back of your mind. But spending all this time alone in your flat or with housemates or just with your own thoughts has probably, you know, really stirred up some weird emotions, right? So all those experiences that you put to the back of your head are now coming to the forefront and you just can't get it out. You just can't, you know, you can't function unless you kind of just say it out loud. So it must be such a painful time for some people that have had been subject of um, sexual assault or misconduct. It just must be so terrible because at the same token, you know, I'm sure sh- because the people always, that's why sometimes I get annoyed at the whole like council culture. The and it, no, People are not fans of council culture in some regards, you know, it can get a bit too crazy, right? People can come out with some ludicrous allegations that have no merit just so that they can see you burn. Fair enough. But in some cases, I have sympathy with it because I think to myself, legitimately, if you're a woman, right, you probably don't want to ruin someone's life with an allegation. You don't. You really don't. But when that person is, you know, um, I guess not receptive to your concerns, they don't want to apologize. They're kind of gloating about the issue. They're rubbing it in your face. You probably are aware that it's going to take you're probably not going to be able to prosecute them in a court of law right the only other thing that you can do to give yourself some sort of sense of retribution is to publicly disgrace them that's the least you can do and then for the people that are like oh but you're gonna ruin his life you know he's gonna be able to get another job blah 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 it's like yeah but you should have thought about that before you start you tried to finger your friend do you know what i mean that's not on that's not a cool thing to do so i guess i have sympathy with that i do a lot and again like i said I, I just think they shouldn't cross that line when it comes to subcultures there should be like an unwritten rule where you look after your own right you don't allow because that's what it should be like it should be like you know if i'm in a scene somewhere and i know guys or girls regardless i'm going to kind of look out for them even though they don't really know me and if i see somebody that i don't know and harassing them i'm going to stand up i'll stand up for them and the hope is that they'll do the same for me right but you're looking out for each other because you know you've seen each other here but it's happened to me plenty of times right you've seen you know i remember being in a club sometime and seeing a girl looking quite uncomfortable to dude and me pretending i was her boyfriend for a bit just so i can get away from the guy and and, and help her go find her friends it, you know you just do that not because you want to be a, a white knight but because it's just you know you've seen that person three or four times in a club and it's just it's a decent thing to do um but yeah this this um issue is pretty disconcerting i read a bit of it earlier but let me get the rest of it now so this is the entire tweet explaining exactly what happened and if you read it it's just heartbreaking stuff man um so this is from the lady in question she, she says in a tweet here uh trigger warning uh details of sexual assault this is my experience with grant dragon aka mind of a dragon it's a weird name in it and said um i'm coming forward with my experience i had with grand dragon aka man of a dragon moad um in the early hours of the 5th of august 2019 grant sexually assaulted me during a cab ride back to west london from south st sutton he had been at we had been at a festival in maiden before going to a hotel in sutton for drinks with a group of about eight of us grant and a friend and myself going to an uber to go back to west london we all sat in the back with grant in the middle seat and me on the left I leant forward in my seat so to steady myself with from feeling sick. I was quite heavily intoxicated. Already this is getting yeah. Graham began to rub my my mid and lower back over my clothes. He then put his hand down the back of my dress to rub my bare skin. God almighty. He then began to massage my shoulders and neck and head with an uncomfortable and almost painful force. He then began groping my fine kiss in the back of my neck, which he continued to do for some time. He then began rubbing my hand that rested on my leg so that I said, ugh. Sometimes I feel, look, man, like, I don't know. If that's your friend, like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? Um, he took, anyway, he continues, he said he took the hand and placed it on his crotch. He then moved my hand away and placed it back onto his crotch, this time with his genitals exposed. He held my hand on his genitals for a short time. During that entire time, I was completely frozen and unable to move. I hoped my lack of movement and reaction would make him leave me alone, but it didn't. And that's the heartbreaking thing when you read these stories, right? Women are always, especially in terms of the power imbalance, like physically, it seems like most of these stories you hear, you always hear the incident of like um, the woman sort of like describing the incident f- um, outside. It's like an outside, it's like an out of body experience, how they describe it. They're so detached from it, which is really frightening. It's a, it, in, fact, in fact, they kind of like turned off, right? They switched off and became numb. And I would think to myself, like, as a dude, um, 
especially when you you're used to getting you're used to getting rejected so often, you know what the signs are when someone doesn't like you, right? You can read them quite quickly because you've got them before, right? You've got some sort of experience, <gasps> some experience with that. So you'd hope that if you were a dude and you were touching a girl up in the back of a car imagine because we don't know what happened in the club let's say he got the wrong end of the stick and he fought in a club there was a chance that he could hook up with this girl you shouldn't do that with your friends anyway but let's say that happened um if that's the case you should have got an indication from the place that you're at prior to getting into the car whether it was a go or not but there also should be a part of you where you should be repulsed or put off by the idea of trying to hook up with your friend when they're heavily intoxicated it should, should just be a thing i don't know i've you know i think some people have, we've all had drunk sexual encounters but when the other person's not into it you don't just continue trying to get it done right you just let it go it's one of them things you just have to choke up to the game and try again another time um you don't try and pursue it in the hopes that they're going to change their mind because i don't know there's just a weird line that that crosses in it trying to persuade somebody whilst they're heavy intoxicated to reciprocate your sexual advances especially when they're making no effort to reciprocate right they're giving you all the indication that they don't want you anywhere near them and they're only there because you know unfortunately you place yourself in a position where they were sitting in the middle maybe because she's the girl she had to sit in the middle because she's smaller or next to him it's just ugh, such a terrible situation um it continues here it says the other passenger was completely unaware of what was happening which is the heartbreaking thing right due to being asleep with his he head in between his legs he was very also very drunk we arrived at the passenger's address which was very close proximity to grants um instead of going to his address next the uber was directed to mine which was about half an hour drive away grant stayed in the car again creep just leave man so he moved over to the window seat on the right and i was silent for a while i was crying into myself while trying to hide it from him he then moved back over to the middle, placed his hands on my shoulder and fire and repeatedly asked me, are you all right, babe? I nodded so he would leave me alone. When we reached my address, I ran out to the car into my house. I got into my bedroom and broke down hysterically. I messaged my closest friends and told them what just happened. Two days later, I confronted Grant via text. He kind of didn't happen, stating he was asleep. Oh. Again, man, why must guys be such dicks to decent women? imagine going through such an ordeal right and then she still had the decency she still had the class she still had the whatever that word is right to process it over two days and then text him for an explanation she didn't you know women truly don't deserve, some women don't deserve men man or some men don't deserve women in some regards just like god almighty dude um, he said he didn't believe me and that he would never do that. It's not him at all and he would never hurt me. I reported it to the police, but the entire investigation was a shambles. Grant ignored all the police attempts to contact him for a month. He finally attended a voluntary interview after a letter was posted to his address. He denied everything. The Uber driver was also interviewed, but claims he didn't witness anything as he was just uh, concentrated on driving. The case was closed due to lack of evidence. God almighty, man. Um, and then I guess off the back of that, everyone's dropped him rightfully so and it said yeah and then um, records said we're moving removing all of his releases from our back catalog slime recording group said a message from slime team said in light of recent allegations so information that has come out regarding mind of a dragon we will be working with our distribution partner to remove all of his previous releases from slime um this place called what's this is most going to deny this to another allegation god almighty conductor or guessing as part of key records said all forms of sexual abuse and misconduct is without doubt is without any doubt unacceptable and should be rooted out immediately i urge everyone to speak out against it he says the statement from kiwi it says kiwi records is aware and extremely concerned about allegations against my and it's interesting that they're using his name in the statement too they're going straight out and saying it said um, i take them very seriously with immediate effect kiwi records is no longer affiliated with mind of a dragon and furthermore his music will be removed from our catalog actions like this will not be tolerated in our community we are committed to ensuring a safe space for people at all times is very important and only through solidarity with survivors and against uh action and against action and action against abusers can we end the perpetuation of the cycles of abuse we urge also supporters and followers to speak out against all forms of sexual abuse and misconduct and then keep hush what's this to then keep hush operations zero tolerance regarding sexual abuse we are moving mind against sex immediately and we will not be working with them in the future we are co-conductor speak up against abuse believe victims this is no place in our scene for abusive behavior and again just i don't know man i wish there was more is it i don't know if it's like training or if it's like you know 
there needs to be something done about um how guys sort of like navigate the scene and how they deal with women in the scene in general because i think there is a lot of mess happening there um just people just not acting right in it just not being gentlemen um not have treating people with respect again because again this girl didn't have to text him she didn't have to hit him up and say hey by the way that wasn't cool blah 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 you know give him a chance to apologize and then basically spit in her face right that's just not acceptable really and again i just think there's such responsibility within our little scene right nightlife club culture um electronic music to just look after each other because again if we can't do that how can we get then get angry when our brothers and sisters go out and play major clubs somewhere in some shitty town right for some big bucks and then they get treated like shit and then we are all up in arms we can't be that hypocritical if we're not treating our fellow brothers and sisters well within our own backyards you know we can't then get angry when some chav down the road decides to try and grope somebody because we're doing the same thing by ignoring the situation that happens in our clubs or by perpetuating it by you know taking advantage of people that are trying to make it their own way it's just yeah it's unfortunate man it really really is man again i have no idea who this guy is don't know the girl myself but i thought the story needed to be spoken about and again maybe there is a lesson to be learned here maybe there is something to be done a workshop a class something to kind of talk about how to conduct yourself and maybe they do that already in some clubs that provide safe spaces they provide them um, some guidelines and some um, house rules about how you conduct yourself but it needs to be something that kind of is implemented nationwide or scene wide right in terms of how to really act in this because it's difficult i guess isn't it because some people just don't do this sort of stuff he might be an anomaly right not everyone is going to be trying to touch up their drunk friend in the back of a cab on the way home and um, some people can just keep their hands to themselves i guess but yeah sad event all along and i hope that girl gets all the hope that she hope the help that she deserves anyway 